Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 21st of May of the May Legal Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's forum. And as you can see, I'm back in New York City. Uh, in my, you know, background and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know really have much more to say. So, uh, let's get started on today's forum. I actually, okay, I guess I lied. Um, uh, I had so many delays on the flight, so I just got back. Um, it took about, like, it's, it, it, you know, from Atlanta, I think it's like a two-hour flight, maybe. Not even an hour, 40 minutes, they say. Uh, but I had like a three-hour delay. Or, well, I had initially an hour delay, and then it went to two hours, and then it went to three hours, and then they added like another 15 minutes. So that trip uh, is so exhausting. And I live about like an hour and a half from the, from the, um, from the airport and it was just a mess so i'm really tired hopefully this is okay i mean this is, looks like it's coin change so it looks like it should be okay because it is a very well-known problem uh and i probably have videos on it before and there's just a lot of good videos explaining this problem in general like all over the internet not like by me well maybe some of them by me hopefully but um so we'll do it together still uh but i would say in general uh i definitely have seen these kind of problems on interviews so definitely make sure you understand dynamic programming which is the point of this week um yeah uh, i think that's all i have to say for a as a as a prelude so let's let's get started let's look at constraints coin oh okay so i was wrong actually <laughs> so there are a lot of variations on the, on the type of these problems um maybe not let's see well um where do you, you could do infinite amount of each coin. Okay. Um, I would say all of these kind of depends on the constraints, and the constraints will have different um, ways of solving it, right? So that's basically the thing. I don't think... When I saw the... I'm not going to lie. When I first saw the number 12, I thought maybe I was thinking of another variation, and there's like a 2 to the 12 solution that they're looking for instead of what I just said, which was dynamic programming, uh, memorization type thing, right? Um, but that said, uh, seems like we should be okay. So, so yeah, so this one, I think there is some caveat here that I want to point out a little bit ahead of time, which is that there's actually a couple of ways you, it's both, mm, I want to say that there, there, there is a couple of ways you can solve this one, um, and it especially if you're doing it bottoms up it's it's easy to make a mistake and not um in a way that you don't have to worry about the order of operations right um or n n the order of the dimensions rather and the dependency because um in this case i think the dependency goes both ways maybe um Yeah, uh, I think that's what I wanted to say. So it definitely still has to be a little bit careful, right? Um, just to at least, in terms of understanding this problem, know that you have, you know, see if you can figure out what I mean. If you solved it one way, see if you can solve it another way. Uh, um, I think that's just my thing about these problems. And why I put emphasis on this one for that, for that issue is because... If you're not if you're not careful, and you kind of like, you know, if you assume that you get it right, that you understand it, it is very easy to, you know, have a tricky not even a tricky variation, but a slightly trickier variation in the future, and you just completely don't know how to solve it because maybe you made an assumption or maybe you just kind of getting a little bit sloppy. And I'm not saying everyone here is sloppy, but I'm saying that uh, it's very easy to be sloppy and. And therefore, um, I urge that people be careful about it, right? Like if you write it bottoms up with respect to the for loops, you can, I think for this one, you can actually have have, have them have the for loops in either order and you should be okay, um, which is fine for this one, like I said. But make sure you understand the nuance and, the, and how if you have these two versions, uh, like if you have these two for loops, what is the different 
problem that you're trying to solve, or not even what the different problem, but what kind of linguistic um, sub problem you're trying to solve, right? Um, and understanding the how to convert exactly what you mean into code um, will help save you time for debugging and fixing things and being more precise in the future. I think that's all I want to say about that one. I know this is a long intro, but um, before I even write code for such a basic form, but I think that is something that is keep, worth keeping in mind. Um, and especially, you know, yeah. Okay, so with all that being said, uh, let's get started. So the way that I'm going to save it is just count or, or get min. I guess this is a get min problem, not number of very side. It's just an amount, right? So we can just do the amount. So that's the way that I'm going to do it. But you can also do it the other way where you keep keep track of all the coins you use. Or you use the all, um, you use the, uh, for each coin, you, you kind of keep it in, in one way at a time, right? And this actually, it may be important, especially, I mean, for this one, getting min, it doesn't matter. But if you're getting like the, the number of unique counts and stuff like that, that may come into play, for example. So definitely be careful. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit dehydrated because I, like I said, I've been traveling a bit. So let me, uh, now I've been talking a bit, so. So yeah, so again, I'm trying to do these dynamic programming videos a little bit different than I usually do, which is first, think about what is the one-time complexity, right? And of course, like I usually say, I actually already know the one-time, just to be clear, I already know what the one-time complexity is before I code, because otherwise you're just wasting time. I mean, in the beginning, you can kind of play around and explore it, or, and especially if you're doing a contest, you have no other idea. You can, If you need to YOLO, you need to YOLO. But especially in an interview, you definitely uh, should practice that skill. So amount is just all of, uh, it's just from zero to A, where A is the range of amount, which can be 10 to the fourth, as you can see to the left. Let me also check that I'm showing the right thing, because yesterday apparently I was not. Sorry, friends. Uh, right, so this is 10,000, right? Um, and, you know, the time complexity is going to be, yeah, as we always, uh, the way that I try to make it uh, clearer, I mean, it's not, it's, it's mostly roughly true. Uh, it's a good practice. Oops. Number of inputs times inputs, uh, input per, oh, sorry, time, times time per input, right? And number of input, well, the number of input is just going to be O of A, right? About O of 10,000, O of A is number of inputs. And now, time per input. What is time per input, right? Well, it's going to be O of C, where C is the number of coins, right? That's the way that I want to phrase it. Because um, in my head, I already know what I want to do. It may not make sense right now, but I'm just giving you th that's my estimate, right? And then given this estimate, it's just 10,000 times C, which is 12. So it's 120,000, uh, roughly speaking, uh, number of uh, uh, operations. So that's going to be good enough in my, my book. Um, so that's basically it. So then now, then we can write the code. And of course, in terms of space, space complexity is the same thing, which is number of inputs times space over input. And of course, space is just going to be, uh, the number of inputs is still O of A, and space per input is just O of 1, because, you know, you put in, in an array element or something, or a lookup table or something, it's fine. Right, so this is going to be O of A. So I knew that this was going to be good. So Okay, so if amount is equal to 0, we return zero coin, right? Because you don't need any coin for this. Um, yeah. And then now we just do base case, right? Best is equal to infinity for some... So we need infinity coin to do this. Oops. Oh, can't type today. Uh, yeah. And then now, it's just trying each coin, right? So for coin and coins, if uh, amount is greater than or equal to coin, uh, then you could do 
best is equal to min of best get min of uh, amount minus coin plus one for using that one coin, right? And then that should be good. That's basically it. And then now we do get min of amount. Um, of course, we didn't do the actual memorization yet, but that's basically our idea. That's one it just to make sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, we, but uh, I was sloppy. But yeah, uh, I forgot. I actually was thinking about it while I was typing it, but then as I was demonstrating, I was wrong. But anyway, we just have to check for infinity, which means that it's impossible. So that's equal to negative one. So yeah. I mean, otherwise, this should be good. Of course, this is going to be too slow for any reasonable things. Uh, so we have to do memorization. And we already did the math for it, so it's fine. And also, I'm a little bit lazy today because, like I said, I've just got up a very long traveling plan. So, uh, so I'm just going to breeze through this one. Hopefully, this is okay. If not, uh, you know, check out my, my uh, videos from yesterday. And I, I talk about it a little bit better. But basically, I just set up cash for each of the possible inputs. And then for these, I go, okay, if... If we have the cash for the amount, then we return the cash. Otherwise, we do the math, and then we set the cash to true, and then we cash the best. Right? <coughs> we only did the com complexity. This looks okay. Let's give it a submit. Hopefully, I don't have any typos. Um, or like weird issues. Oh, huh. Oh, this is faster than last time, actually. 781 day streak here. And that's all we have for today. Uh, let, let me check out what past Larry did. Hmm, a year ago. Yeah. Did I do it? No, no, I did the same. Oh, no, I did it the other way, actually. So I did it the other way, like I said. Um, uh, yeah, so definitely check out that video if you want to see me explain it the other way. So the, like I said, right, in the top of this video, there are two ways to do it. So if you really want to explore understanding this problem, do it both ways. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's all I have for this one. One more shout out for the space optimization, which you can look, I have a video in my, my I have a YouTube video about talking about space optimization. Just search for it or someone put a comment in, in the comments, uh, a link in the comments. But yeah, anyway, that's all I have for today. Really tired. Uh, stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye.